Morning everybody, benign bone tumors. Um, most of the stuff I got through is from this core paper, um, which is basically design, um, benign tumors. And I'm just focusing on the bone tumors, not the uh, soft tissue tumors, which are another massive topic. Um, so as I mentioned, the clinical presentation has been done prior um, <coughs> discussion, but just to recap, pain, pain is the biggest thing. Um, a dull ache, constant, um, and uh, usually at night is the sort of the, the red flags. Trivial accident is when we find a lot of our benign injuries, uh, benign lesions, um, but they can present as a mass or a deform, deformity with growth, um, and usually an incidental finding on x-ray, um, and that's often found with a fracture as well. Physical exam is you have to look at the local area, but you also have to look systemically um, for lymphadenopathies and other causes of benign tumors. Um, location, all the, the standard things you, you learn location, size, and shape, consistency, the tenderness, the mobility, the anatomical relations, and whether or not it transilluminates and had, has an identifiable brewery. Um, and then the usual examinations as, such as lymph nodes and thyroid, and breast exam, lung, and abdomen. Investigations. So the investigations you can go on for a while, but the, the basic investigations that we would expect for, a, well, I would expect for a, a benign tumor workup is a plain film X-ray, preferably the entire bone um, or the region, such as the joint, um, and I would expect some basic bloods, um, looking for an abrasive inflammatory markers, um, which can be a soft indication for a tumoral process going on as well as an infective process, which is always your differential, um, and then the other calcium phosphate and um, Alkyl phosphate, uh, also markers of tumor activity or bone turnover, uh, prostate specific antigen, serum electrophoresis, and urinalysis are also um, identical markers for uh, more so multiple myeloma, but that's always a new differential in the more adult age, age group for a uh, lesion, and then parathyroid hormone. Um, when I see an x ray that has a, a lesion on the I sort of run these questions through my mind. Um, what's the patient's age? Because a lot of the tumours are grouped in patients according to the age of the patient. Um, where is the lesion located, uh, i.e. which bone and, and uh, what part of the bone, metaphysis, diaphysis, epiphysis. If it's um, eccentric or, or um, central within the bone, if it's um, juxtaarticular, these are all differentials that lead you to different um, tumour patterns. Um, what is actually inside the lesion? Does it have, is it completely cystic looking or um, uh, loosened looking on the x-ray or it does it have a mixed appearance um, that can give you indications as to whether or not they're chondroid based lesions um, and then what is the lesion doing to the bone i.e. is it is it uh, lytic um, but then is what is the bone doing in response to the lesion um, is there a periostal reaction um, forming <coughs> um, and then the last thing I sort of look at is is there more than one lesion because more than one lesion does lead you down a different pathway often so basically, um, this is a table just showing different age groups, and just come, uh, concentrating on the, co on the column on the right, the benign column. So in the young age group, osteomyelitis is by far going to be the most common thing we see in terms of bone lesions. Um, and then simple bone cysts are also pretty common up to 20 years of age. And the figures of age are, they're a normal distribution, but there are people outside the mean. So. You can find some people out there. Um, 10 to 20 year age group, chondroblastoma, um, non ossifying fibroma, um, fibrous displays, they're probably the most common, and chondromas we see as well. Um, and then we, the ones you see in the exams or in the bone schools are usually the giant cell tumors and aneurysmal bone bones because they're quite good to show them. Um, they do raise a lot of discussion. And as you get older, you get Paget's disease, which is really the only main benign one. Um, these pictures are around, they're, they're, they're for benign as well as malignant, and I, I found them quite useful, just a, an idea. They're pretty accurate, actually. Um, so fibrous dysplasia is usually a um, central lesion, um, a non ossified fibroma or a fibrous cortical defect uh, is usually an eccentric based condition that's involved in the cortex. Um, they're pretty common. Um, giant cell tumors are usually juxtaarticular. Um, or epiphyseal based and chondroblastoma epiphyseal based. So, just a bit of a whirlwind there. Um, 
and this is a good table to try and remember for, for exams purposes, um, epiphysis, usually they're a GCT or a chondroblastoma depending on the age of the patient um, and in the um, metaphysis it's usually an ABC, aneurysmal bone cyst or a UBC, a unicameral bone cyst or what we call a simple bone cyst um, and non ospine fibroma or fibrous cortical defect. Lots of these um, lesions have multiple names for the same thing. Um, Unfortunately, you just have to learn them all because people use them interchangeably. Um, and then difficile lesions, you, the most, probably the most common that we see is the osteoid osteoma um, and EG. I'll go into a bit more detail of each little one. Um, juxtacortical bone tumours, osteoid osteoma, um, osteochondroma, they're probably the most common we see, ignoring the malignant ones. <clears throat> and then what the bone, what the lesion is doing to the bone or what the bone's response is in terms of a periosteal reaction, we, we always look for a periosteal reaction um, in lesions and that gives us an indication as to if the um, lesion is latent or more aggressive um, and they, they can lead us down to different pathways as to what, whether, whether or not we should further investigate these lesions. So the periosteal reaction, a solid periosteal reaction as in they're all thickened cort cortical um, bone is commonly associated with the osteoid osteoma, which I'll show later. But you can also get it in a whole lot of other ranges. Um, the aggressive periosteal reaction is an acute osteomyelitis, uh, but then a lot of the malignant conditions will present that way. So anything with a, an agreed periosteal reaction, an aggressive periosteal reaction, um, you, sh you, sh you should be very much thinking of a malignant condition. Um, and then the multiple bone lesions. So fibrous displays is a classic. Um, EEG is also a classic. Um, and then enchondromas um, are also there. Um, so this paper said that these, di these conditions are usually just diagnosed by plain film. Um, and I think you can get away with most of them there, but I think in this day and age, we tend to over-investigate lesions, and I think it's just a safety factor. Um, there have been some benign-looking lesions that have been missed and become found to be malignant later. Um, so, so I'll just very briefly talk about these conditions. Um, they're not in any particular order of uh, um, um, occurrence, but they're the ones that probably you see the most in terms of the benign lesions. So the osteoid osteoma, um, happens in the younger age group. Uh, it's a, usually a self-limiting condition, and that self-limiting condition between a year and a half to three years, depending on which paper you read. Um, it's classically re relieved by aspirin, uh, <coughs> high-dose aspirin, and it usually affects the proximal femur, the diaphysis of the tibia, um, and even the spine. It can lead to a painful scoliosis. Um, the, the whole key thing with the osteoidosteoma is that there's usually a nidus uh, that you can see on either plain film or in CT. And that nidus is typically less than two centimetres in size. Um, the management for an osteoidosteoma is either, it's either just simple um, non-steroidals, uh, preferably aspirin more so than, say, neurofin. Um, or if that's not um, adequate, then CT guided radiofrequency ablation is probably the mainstay treatment at this stage, um, unless the radio, unless the radiofrequency ablation is going to be in an area that's too um, risky and adjacent structures, so um, open surgical excision, such as the spine, is pretty uncommon for an open. This is just a, a, an example, a um, little bit yeah, sort of coming out. But you can see there's a round lesion there, and it's usually a much more thickened uh, sclerotic bone area, but on the CT scan, you can see that there is a uh, much better um, focus on nidus there. Um, an osteoblastoma is basically an well, it's thought to be an extension of the osteoid osteoma, um, but it's usually a larger lesion, more than greater than two centimetres. It's not self-limiting, um, and there's pain, and often there is neurology because it usually affects the spinal segments, uh, posterior spinal segments, um, because of its, its mass effect. Um, and the X-ray appearance is much more destructive and more permeative, as in it's quite diffuse throughout. Um, the management for this is really <coughs> cur curatage, open curatage, um, and a marginal excision. Uh, enchondromas, so these are benign cartilaginous tumours. Uh, they usually have an appearance of um, something within the bone. That's one of my questions. 
um, commonly occur in the hand and even the foot in the um, phalan phalanges. Um, and they're usually a difficile or metaphyseal lesion, um, very cellular on histology. And these are often found with a pathological fracture. Um, and there's a, if you have multiple enchondromas, then there's a condition called Olio's disease or Mafuchi syndrome. And the, these are important because Olio's disease does have an increased risk of um, um, malignant transformation, um, more, but more so with Mafuchi syndrome, which is, depending on who you read, up, up to 100% chance of getting a, um, a malignant tumour such as an astrocytoma or, or GI malignancies. So they should be followed up by the general surgeons as well. Um, and the management for, very much the management for a lot of benign tumours is, is the same, which is either observation or actually um, curatage and bone graft or curatage and extended um, intralesional bone graft. Um, so it's a bit vague to see there, but that's your enchondroma there. This is your classic enchondroma here, looking appearance. So it's got that chondroid uh, appearance on plain film, and then this is a um, MR of the side there, showing that the same sort of appearance. Um, osteochondromas. These are you, you probably would have seen a few in the for the junior guys in, in theatre. We've taken off a few down at Sunshine recently. Um, these are aberrant cartilage. Uh, that has forming bone from the prechondrial ring. Um, these commonly occur in the knee, in the proximal femur, in the proximal humerus. Um, the x-rays can often show a pedunculated uh, lesion or it can be just quite flat and sessile and usually associated within one or two centimetres of the, of the growth plate. Um, we talk about the cartilage cap. So in adults, the cartilage cap is usually only two or three millimetres thick. It can be up to six millimetres. But in children, it can be up to one or two centimetres, so you can still you can see a small stalk on X-ray, but it's actually quite a large lump. Um, and these are important because they're usually they're usually um, asymptomatic or not needed to be treated at all. But if they are press putting pressure on local structures such as tendons or nerves, then they can become quite symptomatic. Um, you can have multiple exostoses, and the figure of 10% malignant transformation does change from place place you read. Um, I've read up to 50% malignant transformation, and it usually transforms into a chondrosarcoma, which is um, a very nasty condition. There's a classic osteochondroma, um, and it's, you know it's pointing away from the physis, which is the standard sort of approach um, in a scalarly mature child. The uh, chondroblastomas, <coughs> these are one of two things that usually associate themselves with the epiphysis. Um, the other one is the GCT, but the GCT usually occurs in the slightly older age group, so probably over the 20 age, but there can be a bit of overlap. <coughs> um, these are usually in the distal femur, or the proximal tibia, or the proximal humerus. Um, the x-ray does show a fairly well sharply demarcated lesion, um, and again the management is curatage and bone graft, however you have to be conscious here that, that if you take too much bone out from a juxta articulate surface, then you may collapse your, your, chondri your chondral surface. So reconstruction of the uh, area might be required. And there is an occurrence of metastasis to the lung. So some people will advocate um, imaging the chest as well with either a plain film, but more so with a CT now. Um, so yeah, it does come up. So here's a juxta articular lesion that's well demarcated. Occurring in the in the knee. There's nothing to differentiate from giant cell tumor. So you could you could look at that. Um, you, the age can give you an idea, but no. At the end of the day, this would, in my hands, this would be referred for biopsy. Um, and they're terrible pictures. Sorry, but here, um, you can see there's multiple chondroblastomas in the proximal humerus on actual slicing. Um, CMF, I've never seen it. Um, chondral myxoid fibroma, um, so I haven't written much about it, but it's a benign cartilage tumour. It occurs more in males, long bones. Um, the x-ray does show a very lytic, very destructive, um, sharply demarcated, and it's usually an eccentrically based lesion. Um, but it's part of the differential. Um, you can see here that the whole uh, lateral side of this distal tibia, um, including down to the joint surface, is being uh, eaten away. Intensely uh, bright on the uh, this uh, MRI, T1 weight MRI, which is very unusual. 
And then the GCT, so the giant cell tumour, um, was these giant cell tumours of tendon sheaths, and there's giant cell tumours of foot and ankle, and there's giant cell tumours generally. Um, so this is the giant cell tumours of generally general bone. They're a, a benign condition, but they're an aggressive benign condition, which means they do erode bone very quickly. Um, they do have a less, around about 2% metastasis rate to the lung, so often these do get chest, um, chest CT scans in, in um, younger adults. Um, females are affected uh, more so than males, um, and they typically affect the epiphysis of the bone, um, the knee, the vertebra, and the sacrum. The X-ray usually shows a lytic destructive um, <coughs> lesion, um, and management for the GCT is usually curatage. It's extended curatage, but then there's, you can add phenol to try and take out the remaining cells that you can't see. You can add cement, which is the PMMA, um, or you can add bone graft. Um, so there's no real um, one treatment's better than the other. Bone graft still the defect. So the, the problem is that, they, as I said before, they're usually associated with joints and they're usually the knee. So if you go in there and just shell this out, then you've got a very unstable platform for the rest of this patient's life. So doing that with bone graft or allograft would be uh, indicated. The, um, I won't go into too much of the histology, but the, this is the classic histopathology slide that you'll see in every bone school. Um, and, the, and the key features here are um, Spindle-shaped cells, um, such as these guys, and these big giant cells. Now, giant cells occur in a lot of benign conditions, but the giant cell tumour is um, by far the majority. Um, and there's some pleomorphic nuclei here, the dark nuclei, of different shapes. Uh, aneurysmal bone cysts, we talk about that as a common condition as well. It's associated with um, uh, giant cell tumours, chondroblastomas, uh, CMF and fibrous dysplasia. Uh, these again occur in the less than 20 year age group. They are typically eccentric on x ray, lytic, expansile, and metaphyseal um, in their uh, location. Um, the the pathognomonic, uh, or the, uh, what's the word for it? Other thing that people look at is the MRI uh, findings. And if they find that there are um, fluid, fluid levels on MRI, then it's usually indic indicative of an, of an ABC. Um, and again, the management is curatage and bone graft. Um, so these are two um, examples, distal tibia, where it's an expansile lesion. It's well demarcated, but it is involved in the cortex, and um, this one's more so on the radius. You can see the cortex is actually being expanded uh, radially. And you can have these that actually come right out, like here. I've seen some very big ones clinically. Um, and again, these are conditions that need to be um, treated appropriately at the near joint surfaces and growth plates. Um, and the aneurysmal bone cyst is um, usually uh, looks like this. It does again have multiple large cells um, and you can see this native osteoid bone there that's being eroded away by these um, juxtaticular cells, juxta um, osteoid cells. And the simple or unicameral or UVC bone cyst um, it's pretty common in kids. Uh, we see them usually the ones I've seen are in the proximal humerus um, and the proximal femur. Uh, I haven't seen many in the distal tibia. The um, x ray is a symmetrical cystic expansion, usually trabeculated. Fallen leaf sign or fallen fragment sign is also is the next classic people thing that people are saying. Um, you see it on plain film or CT. Uh, management again is management's questionable. Some people, it used to be thought that. These present um, from a pathological fracture, and the fracture encourages bleeding, and the bleeding um, is said to uh, trigger the repair of this cyst or filling this cyst up with bone. Um, depending on who you read and who you listen to, um, it, I don't think that's that accurate. Um, they need to be followed up because they don't often go and heal, go on to heal themselves. Um, and occasionally they'll need steroid injections um, multiple times, um, and if that still fails to work, then um, Bone grafting, curatage and bone grafting. It's a, a classic proximal humerus. Um, there's your fallen leaf sign or fallen fragment sign. And then fibrous dysplasia. Um, this is a developmental abnormality. Uh, if it's associated with precocious puberty and cafe or lay spots, then we, we uh, give it the title of McCune Albright syndrome. 
um, commonly occur in the proximal femur, uh, can result in what we call shepherd's crook deformity of the proximal femur. Um, and on x-ray, it's a well-defined sclerotic rim, um, and there's this ground glass appearance. This x-ray doesn't really show the ground glass appearance as well as I've seen, um, but uh, that's the, the classic description. Um, histology is also classically described as an alphabet soup. Um, I still struggle to see some of that sometimes. Some people call it Chinese characters, but not the ones I've seen. Um, management, again, is medically, medical management is involved with bisphosphonates, um, but often it's, they're, they're either left completely alone um, or they're prophylactically fixed because they can run, run into a fracture risk. Um, this is a fairly low power view, and effectively what you can see here is that there's multiple, um, very, very cellular, very um, high uh, um, cellular. Hypercellular, uh, but these, these characters that people talk about are these, yeah, not the fun Chinese characters I've seen. But. Um, and then fibrous cortical defect or non ossifying fibroma, um, two names for the same condition. Probably the most common benign lesion that we see, um, usually affected from metastasis of long bones. They are radio loosened on x ray, they're expansile, they're from scalloping, and they're usually well demarcated. And the treatment for these is usually that they're self-limiting and spontaneous regression. It's more about counselling the parents and the, and the patient. But this is a benign condition that's, that is often found. Um, but occasionally they'll go on to um, cause some grief that requires some surgery, such as, again, extended um, curatage and, and supplementing bone grafting or um, cementing. Um, and here's some classic examples. They're eccentric, usually cortical-based, expansile but they're very well demarcated. Um, and then I'll put in this um, eosinophilic granuloma, histiocytosis X, or Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Again, the same name for the um, condition. Um, some people are now calling these a group of conditions under Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So probably the correct name is now Langerhans cell histiocytosis and not EG. Um, this paper went on to talk about EG is actually um, more about the monostotic, uh, so one bone lesion um, disease of histiocytosis. Um, and then there's the multiple bone lesions with also some visceral disease, and that's the hand shoulder Christian disease. Um, and they have exothalamus, diabetes, and uh, elytic skull lesions as well. So people who present with EG or you suspect EG should get a, at least a lateral skull x ray to look for um, any lesions within the skull. And then um, in that third one, letterus, I don't know, it's seaweed, seaweed disease. Um, it's a young children condition I've never never seen or pretty much heard about. Um, you get effectively you get proliferation of the Langerhans cells of the, of the dendritic system. Um, they're usually a benign solitary lesion. Um, they're multi-systemic, um, lymphoproliferative, um, can be so they can be life-threatening. So bloods are also useful to get done. Um, and they're of a, of a young age group. Um, <coughs> locations, the locations pretty much anywhere, but the skull of the pelvis and the, and the, um, the femur is pretty is a pretty well common, common place. Um, and again, they're well defined sclerotic borders, cortical scalloping, and they can affect and cause vertebral planar, which is flattening of your vertebral bodies. Um, management, depending on what you, what the systemic effects are, but it's usually just monitoring. Um, or curatage and bone graft. Um, chemotherapy is, is used if it's multifocal. And again, I mean, this example here of EG, you just see it's cortically eroding into the pretty diffuse. Um, EG is a, a, one of the classic mimickers, um, and it uh, would be still be investigated um, with uh, biopsy, because you're not sure exactly what it is. Um, these are different examples. Uh, so this is an eight-year-old kid who presented with left hip pain, um, and there's an ill-defined left um, lytic or radiolucent lesion that's affecting the um, pelvis there. And she went on to have biopsy, and it was found to be a um, um, the um, uh, EG, and she had grafting done and some injections of steroids, and it's now filled in, and she's been asymptomatic. So she's an example. They are treatable. So most of that was from core. Um, there is a JAS article from 99, which is um, also a good article, just on benign bone tumors. 
for, for children. Um, thank you. Pretty dry topic, but it's, uh, unfortunately, there's. I, I, got, I gave up at that 71. There are more than 71 benign bone lesions listed, um, so I gave up. And they're the ones that I've seen. Them, probably missing. Um, BoneTumors.org is also a good website. Thank you very much. Thanks.